Hello, crafters. This is Yana Smakula for SimonSestiev.com. Welcome back for another Yeepie for Yana episode. In this video, I'm creating with the Simon Says Stamp Peony Background Stamp Set, and I'm also combining it with a letterpressed sentiment made using new better press system from Spellbinders. It's been a long time since I've used colored pencils to do coloring on my cards, and I decided it was time to revisit this technique. Now here's a look at this background stamp. It is absolutely gorgeous. I love those large, bold flowers. They can make any card pop in no time. I also have a sheet of specialty better press paper from Spellbinders. Now this paper is cut to four and a quarter by five and a half inches. It will make the front of my card. And like I said, it is specialty cotton paper. Now it is perfect for better press. But as I was experimenting with better press, I have found that this paper is also amazing for pencil coloring. So today I'm using this paper for stamping with cling rubber stamps and coloring. And I'll also use it for better press, but you'll see that at the end of this video. So I have my Misty stamping tool. I have placed the cotton panel inside the Misty. I have a Misty sticky uh, mat in there. And I'm going to stamp this image using VersaFine Onyx Black ink. I have just re-inked my ink pad so it's nice and fresh. And I did stamp this image twice to have a nice black outline to those images. And now we can go ahead and start coloring. Now, sometimes when I do this sort of stamping, I might also heat emboss the outline in clear embossing powder to set the black outline in place and also protect it from... Uh, me coloring over it accidentally using a colored pencil. Because when you color with colored pencils, uh, a colored pencil will color over the black outline. And you'll see some of that in my video today as I color my images. But I decided that I didn't want to do any heat embossing for this card. But I did want to mention it just in case you want to do it. So I have my Polychromos colored pencils from Fiber Castell, and these are my absolute favorite colored pencils in the whole world. I have received them as a gift from a crafty friend, and I've loved them ever since. Now I'm going to use two to three shades for each image section. I'm starting with the leaves and I'm coloring those green. Now I'm not going to give you the exact names or exact numbers of the pencils. I'm just going to give you general color suggestions. You know, go ahead and look through your stash, see what color pencils you have. Maybe you have Prismacolors, maybe you have these Polychromos, maybe you have another brand. Go ahead and use what you have and try to see what other colors, what colors you like, you know? So the technique I'm using today is flick style coloring. I add flicks of color to each section, starting with the darkest color, with the darkest shade pencil, to lay down my shadows. I also add the same color, so the same shadow, from the opposite side of my image. So here, the opposite side of the leaf. And next, I'm adding my lighter color in, in the same way. But here I'm extending this color now a bit further into the leaf, leaving very little white space. But I am leaving white space here and this will be the highlight for the leaf. And you'll also see me do the same for the petals. So I'm leaving the highlight for my images. I love coloring my images this way. I then go back to the dark green and I reapply it and I also reapplied the light, green, the light green as well. You can go back as many times and you can layer and layer the pencils until you're happy with the intensity and the amount of pigment you have on your paper. Now I have a sheet of paper and like this is just scrap paper like printer paper and I use it under my hand as I don't want to accidentally smear the ink or move the color on the image or, you know, get my hand dirty. So that's why I have this sheet of paper here. Nonetheless, I did manage to get the paper slightly dirty from all of the pencil shavings, but that is actually easily fixable, easily removable using a pencil eraser. You can just basically erase some of the pencil using a regular pencil eraser. Still, using a sheet of paper here is also helpful. Now with the leaves colored, I moved on to coloring the flowers. So there are two large flowers and two small buds. I decided to use orange and pink for the large flowers. And here I started by adding the darkest orange in the exact same way. 
So I followed the stamped lines to create or accentuate the folds of my petal. And if there are no stamped lines on the petal, I try to envision where the stamped lines might be. And I try to imagine where I can create dimension and where I can create the folds in each petal. You'll notice that I do color one petal at a time, and that's how I create when I work with colored pencils. You know, I work at a small section. When I'm done with that section, I move on to the next one. So next, I use the medium orange color, and again, I extend the flicks further into the petal on both sides and both ends from the base of the petal to the tip of the petal. Now here, I also have a third color or a third shade of orange, the lightest orange, and I'm using it to blend the other colors. And again, I'm extending it even further into the petal, into that white space, leaving just a little bit of the true white highlight. Now, when working with colored pencils, it is very important to keep the tips of the pencils sharp. I cannot color at all if the tips are dull. You know, I don't feel that I'm getting the control that I like. I'm not getting the right amount of pigment on the paper. So I sharpen my pencils all the time. And it is important to have a very good pencil sharpener. The reason I, why I love my polychromos so much is because these are hard pencils, meaning they sharpen to a very fine point and they sharpen nicely without breaking. So I can have a very fine point to my pencil and I can add even the finest strokes, you know, even the finest details to my coloring. The pink flower is colored using a dark pink, a medium pink, and a white pencil. So I'm using white here to blend the pinks together and also soften them. So I love using white pencil and it is probably the one pencil that I use the most as I do use it with all the other colors that I have. Like I said, it is absolutely great for blending. In fact, I have several white pencils because I use them so much. Finally, I used some peach colors to color the two small flower buds. And here again, I used a dark peach, a light peach, and then a white pencil to blend these together. And here's what the finished panel looks like. I love this result. Now I have a simple tip to share with you. I did color over the black stamped lines using my white pencil. Uh, it was unintentional and that dulled the black, of course, and it just didn't look good in the end. I could have prevented that by heat embossing the outline in clear embossing powder, something that I mentioned at the beginning of this video. But I found a super simple fix for this using a regular, a regular pencil, you know, something that we all have in our stash. So I just used a regular pencil. This is just a pretty floral pencil that I happen to have from Rifle Paper. And I colored over the black stamped outline using my pencil. So anywhere where I had accidentally added white coloring, I just colored over that with my regular pencil and it helped bring back that black outline. It's not a perfect fix, of course, because the regular pencil is gray. It is not black, so it is not, it's not giving me a true black color. But if you think, you know, if you decide between the white, like a white spot on your black outline and a, and a dark gray, I would much rather go with a dark, dark gray because it isn't as visible, it isn't at, as noticeable, and it's just a nice trick uh, you know, for a quick and simple fix. And also, it doesn't require any other supplies. We all have regular pencils in our stash. Next, I really wanted to add a better press sentiment to this card. So I used a sentiment plate from the Butterfly Garden from Spellbinders. So this is their brand new letter press, a better press plate. And here I have my better press system from Spellbinders. And I'm going to press this sentiment onto their white specialty cardstock. So this is the same cardstock that I used to do my stamping and coloring on. I'm going to give you a very quick demo of the better press. This is in no way a full better press tutorial, but I wanted to incorporate a better press component on my card. So that's what I did here. So I first placed the sentiment plate onto my better press system. It is magnetic, so the plate is staying there 
firmly, it's not going to move. I have also attached a cardstock sheet onto my clear top plate and I use Spellbinders Best Ever Craft Tape to tape it in place. So that's what you wanna do. Next, I use the Specialty Spellbinders Better Press Ink. I inked up the plate. I made sure to really get the ink onto the plate. And when you do it, I wasn't sure how to do it at first, but the more you do it, the, the more you learn. So you basically just uh, tap and turn, tap and turn. So you're getting a little bit of ink onto that plate. And once I had that done, I placed the clear plate onto my better press system. I brought in my Spellbinders Platinum 6 die cutting and embossing machine. And now I'm slowly sending this through the machine to press into my paper. The trick here is you only want to go forward, do not go back. So just send it one way, send it forward. And let's take a look. Isn't that beautiful? We have a gorgeous pressed impression, pressed sentiment into that paper. So we used a specialty paper and the paper has a little bit of give. So you have room to press that image into your paper. So we not only added the beautiful um, the beautiful design onto the paper, but we also pressed it into the paper. I'm also going to use a coordinating die. So I first tried using the large frame die, but it actually ended up being too big. So this, when you cut this sentiment, this frame out like this, it ends up being as wide as your card. So my card is A2, so it's four and a quarter by five and a half inches. And this ends up being four and a quarter inches wide. And that even that butterfly, it's a little bit bigger than that. So I then used a, another coordinating die that is included in that same mm, better press plate set. And I just cut the thank you sentiment and the butterfly. So that worked a lot better for my card, for my vertical uh, card, for my portrait card. If I were if I were to make a, a landscape card, I could have used the frame uh, with the sentiment. You know, that would have worked fine. But here, I just needed the sentiment and just the butterfly. I also used my colored pencils to color the butterfly. I used the exact same colors as before. And then I adhered my background onto an A2 card base. I used my Simon Says Stamp T-square ruler to adhere the sentiment onto my card. I used foam adhesive squares to pop the sentiment up. And of course, I popped the butterfly on my card as well. Lastly, I used the sparkling clear sequence from Pretty Pink Posh to add a little bit of sparkle to this design. I added just a couple of sequins here and there, and I absolutely love the way this turned out. So you have a beautiful, beautiful stamping in the background. Again, I just love those florals. You know, they're so big, so bold and beautiful. And with these florals, you have a lot of room to do some proper blending and shading. You know, whatever coloring medium you decide to use with these flowers, you have have a lot of room to be able to really enjoy that coloring and go to town. So you have the beautiful flowers, you have a beautiful letterpress sentiment, and it's just gorgeous. So here's a look at this card. Thanks so much for spending time with me today. Love you guys, and I'll see you next time. Bye!